there's lots of people already. Neil, James, James not eating his lunch, that's excellent. I'm never going to let James forget that he ate his lunch on Michael's. I've got so. questions. <laughs> ah, that would explain it. That's good. Afternoon, Caroline. Hi, Gary, how are you? I'm okay, you? Um, getting there, it's Thursday lunchtime. There's only a day and a half before the weekend. There, there is a chance we might make it, so that's excellent. Good, what's the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> a day when there's fewer emails, not no emails, fewer emails. Yes, and fewer. Gary, you're at home. You shouldn't be working. I am. I am. I came because I, I knew I was going to be disturbed. So <laughs> I can walk next door and come into the house. So. Oh well, that's true. Yes, exactly. Good. Okay. So we've got quite a few people. Um, so today. Uh, like I was requested and the others, there aren't any big new things to do with furlough. Um, there's lots and lots of lovely horror stories to regale you with about things people have done where you go off, you think, really, why did you think that was suitable? Some of which might be relevant to golf clubs. Not all my horror stories are from golf clubs. I'm just saying, not all of them. Just, you know, 70% of my horror stories. It's, uh, it's always fun talking to people and they go, no. Um, so what have we got going on at the moment? Okay, so um, this is not furlough. Uh, this is about interactions with employees. Okay, so members of staff amongst themselves, particularly in F&B, talk on WhatsApp. I know a lot of them do their scheduling, their rotors on WhatsApp. We've just had a private sector company who we were working with on an ad hoc basis. Um, we were going through a, a disciplinary process um, and the lady in question has resigned and now filed a sexual harassment claim against her boss because on their WhatsApp group, she ha he had been sharing hardcore porn with her. Brilliant. I, uh, he's like, but, but it was two way and she was sharing stuff with me and I was sharing stuff with her and you know, it was all fine and everything. And it's like, it is never, ever fine to share anything like hardcore porn with your employees. I am not talking to you guys because guys, I think all club managers, club managers are not the problem. House managers are the potential problem here. They are the ones doing it. We have had over the years, quite a few house managers who've been inappropriate with their female staff if they fancied them. We haven't had, it's strange actually, you would have thought nowadays in the enlightened time there would have been inappropriate behavior with boys as well. We haven't had that. I don't, I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm just saying it's usually a male house manager being inappropriate with female employees just to make sure that all your staff, certainly all your managerial staff understand that while they might think it's okay, do not send anything that you would not want to show your mother or your grandmother on your phone. Okay, just don't do it. Just, if you want to send them something separately, do it on a at least a different way, but actually no, don't send it separately. Just don't do it. If they are an employee, they're an employee and they can sue you two bits. So this guy, she was only, she'd only been there two years, three months. So we could have fired her back in January and had no comeback because he started this process to get rid of her gross misconduct. And there was gross misconduct, but not anymore. He now has to do a settlement agreement of at least a year's pay to make this go away because he did send it and she's got proof. And it really, and Kathy's read what it is that she has, and we won't go into details, but it really is, really is hardcore. So, um, it's so much fun, this job. It's great. So what I'm saying is don't ever send something and think that an employee has the same sense of humor because they're all, everybody's friends until they're not, and then the club or you is going to be in trouble, okay? Um, the other thing to keep reiterating, if you've got people under two years, and they're not performing correctly, they're not at 100% or even 80%, you need to have that decision at one year, 10 months, usually earlier, ideally earlier, but at the very latest, one year, 10 months in to go, do we want to keep them? Bearing in mind it's going to cost us, you know, X thousand pounds to get rid of them in two months. Actually, no, let's just part company now and move on. 
there's been a lot because of the the uh, unusual coronavirus situation there's been a lot of people who've been put on furlough and then people have come back to us and said actually they were pretty rubbish beforehand can i get rid of them now but they're over the just over two years sometimes two years one month over it's like if we'd had this conversation two months ago you could have got rid of them really easily really cheaply now it's going to take a lot more money okay um james james you had some questions do you want to ask some questions yeah just two um one of them is for people that were keeping on furlough through through past into august just need to send them another extension letter to say it's carrying on as per yeah. the other one yeah and if you're if any of you are changing the amount you're paying them to give them a month really a month's notice so that people can adjust their spending because if they think they're getting 100 percent and you're only going to be able to pay them 80 percent because for whatever reason you're going down then you need to let them know as much as possible not get to the end of july for example and tell them with the pay slip oh by the way we only paid you 80 percent for july but okay yeah. Okay. Uh, second one is obviously shielding ends at the end of this month so we've got an employee who is um, shielding uh, and so if I say to him obviously look at ends so you're coming back to work on August 1st when he goes uh, no I don't want to is it we can we can then offer him actually you can stay on further that's fine is that that's okay is it yes yes and no <laughs> in as much that it would be what what's he got that's why is he shielding his partner's son is uh, severely disabled okay so yes you absolutely can leave them on furlough for as long as you can afford to leave them on furlough um all children are supposed to be back in education in september as normal so there wouldn't be any shielding then so at the very latest in september he would be expected to come back mm -hmm. because all children no matter whether they're shielding or not are supposed to be back at school um, he's the same person we've had emails about as well haven't we? yeah um, and it's then also making sure that your risk assessments and your COVID policy about social distancing is, is solid. I mean, it needs to be solid anyway. We have no idea whether there's going to be personal injury claims on this. Um, so that when he does come back and he's still going to be nervous, it's like, OK, but you're going to be working here. This is how we're going to protect you we're going to disinfect, blah, blah, blah. So you've got all that to let him know. Yes, you can stay on furlough for now, but we would like to see you back in September. And by the way, here are all our risk assessments and policy on this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Um, Greenkeepers. Ah, OK, so this has come out as well again, because obviously we're, we're talking to some of you quite a lot, some of you not very much. But the, the, if you have any health and safety infringements from any of your staff, we need to jump on those really quickly. I'm just going to put it out there. The ones that do the health and safety infringements are usually the ones we want to get rid of, but we don't have anything particularly bad um, from them. There's not particularly bad performance. It's not great performance, but it's not great. Uh, it's not bad. And then they've got a, not a sort of medium attitude. They're not positive, but they're not awful. So there's nothing really to discipline them on. You don't really want to do a settlement agreement because it's going to get expensive. But if they have done something that is potential gross misconduct, we can at least get to a final written warning, if not actual dismissal with it. So we have um, a, a, a club where the, one of the greenkeepers has not been following the rules for mowing, for cutting the grass. So those are things that need to be jumped on because, and don't, don't think that you don't need to do it. And we need to do it at the time. So as soon as, really, as soon as you discover it, ring us up and say this has happened this is what we're going to do is that okay yes it is and then we can get into that disciplinary process really quickly like i said we can't guarantee there'll be a dismissal but don't sort of tell us three four five months afterwards oh yeah back in january there were some things um we have a, a club as well where the uh, head greenkeeper is off sick and is now claiming he's being bullied of course of course he's being bullied even though he's been off for 12 months he's being bullied all the time at the club um, but we've now got an external company in looking at the health and safety and they're saying there's no COSH, um, there's no risk assessments, all the things that he was responsible for are not in place, which is gross misconduct because he is responsible for health and safety for the Greens team. So we have that as an option to go down, which we are obviously taking, to then part companies with him or at least to get him to agree to a reasonable settlement agreement so that he goes. But this has only come after sort of six weeks of talking to each other that suddenly this has come out 
and it's like anything particularly in the greens teams to be honest it does tend to be in the greens teams about health and safety infringements flag it up to us straight away so that we can advise whether it's going to be something we need to do okay because you don't want to waste an opportunity to part company with somebody who really isn't performing properly okay um okay what other things have come up this week so we've got uh, taking holiday whilst on furlough hopefully i've said this enough um but if you have got people still on furlough make sure that they take any accrued holiday whilst they're on furlough so you're only paying the top up amount so that you don't have when they come back that they say right i've got 20 days left to take i'm going to take those 20 days now you can reject a request for holiday you absolutely can but that doesn't mean that they won't take it and then we've got to do a disciplinary which is gross misconduct da, da. so it's just easy to pre easier to preempt that by making sure they've taken all their accrued holiday to date okay then they're not going to be so likely to want to go off on holiday okay um, people refusing to come back from furlough if they're shielding this month is absolutely fine next month they are supposed to be back at work so it's making sure you've got your health and safety again this is turning into a health and safety session but um having your health and safety in place possibly with masks if that's what they feel is going to keep them safe um or the mask for everybody else rather than for them and that's how it would work but um but getting that all set up um the only exception to the the kind of shielding going forward which will have to be flexible on are people with childcare responsibilities and when i say people i mean 95% of the time females because you don't want to be part in company with them because they can't come back to work because of their childcare commitments which they would normally have set up but because of covid there are no holiday camps or very few because they're very limited on the number of children they can take they can't take the 30 children in one group they can only take 15 in a group okay so you will have to be flexible on that until september but like i said in september all children are supposed to be back to school at the normal time no matter what their parents say, it's just like taking the children out to go on holiday, they will be fined and prosecuted if the children are not in school when there's no lockdown, okay? Um, okay, any other questions at the moment? I would like to say Melanie's mask looks lovely. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, with owls and cats, very nice. That's good. I've got mine on my own. I've got flowers on my one. So <laughs> and we, we're going to have some in the office because we don't need them in the office, masks in the office. But if we go to the post office to post stuff, we have to wear a mask to go to the post office. So there you go. Gary, you haven't got questions. Yeah, I'm just talking about the question James asked about letters to extend the furlough. I've been absent the last couple of weeks. So can you just reiterate what our obligation will be to do with that? Um, yeah, so it's it's just to send an extension one out. Um, whether you're doing them flexible furlough, that's a slightly different letter. Um, but it's just to say whatever you said originally, and some people actually put an end date on it, and some people didn't. Okay, some people said until further notice, um, in which case you don't need to extend it. Um, if you said until the end of July, then you would need to go back and say further to that, and, and we've got the letter further to that previous letter. We are now informing you you will be on furlough until the end of august till the end of september till the end of october yeah okay thank you and there shouldn't be any problem with that i haven't found many people who are upset about being paid to do nothing um just be aware though again this came up in the private sector that although uh, some of you have been very generous uh, paying people 100 percent just be aware that they will not see that as generosity uh, they, they just won't people are ungrateful employees possibly doubly so so don't assume that whatever you're going to do you've got brownie points to play on because you paid them at 100 percent they will see that as the default position because they haven't known anything different the ones that were on 80 percent would have seen if you said oh this month we'll do 100 there's a difference they they would appreciate that more it's just in the private sector we had a guy who was fired actually back at the beginning of february was working his notice period and then lockdown came so they reinstated him just for furlough they weren't reinstating him as employee but just for furlough he was paid a hundred percent for four months we've now gone back to him because we're doing restructuring and saying okay we're gonna have to let you go at the end of july so really sorry off you go 
that's it. And he's like, no, you can't do that. And uh, you need to give me another month's notice at 100% because you reinstated me. So I'm not actually been fired. You've had four months free money. What are you talking about? And he then also said, oh, and by the way, I worked all the way through April and I did all this work, which we're not, we don't know how he did it because he didn't have a company phone and he didn't have access to the company computer system. So how he was working is beyond us. But we saw that as a veiled threat to go and blackmail us with HMRC to say, oh, they claimed furlough money while I was still working. So what we've actually done is rolled back the furlough claim for him for April. So if he does go and inform on us, inform on us, um, there is no claim. Therefore, there's nothing illegal. And we've told him to go to early conciliation because they will just laugh at him. You've been paid four months, 100 percent, and you want another month of free money yeah get out of here there are people who've actually been badly treated so um but just be aware that it that gratitude thing just don't assume that everybody is on the same level as you guys are saying oh well, aren't we generous doing this they'll be yeah that, that's what you had to do we we see that as a, a default so uh, i'm just i'm just thinking this week this week's session i feel a little bit more jaded with life i think i've had a few too many problems this week just saying so so i'd like some positive stuff next week if we could only have positive conversations that'd be really nice so um okay any other questions at the moment okay we have just to let you know huge drum roll and probably we need to have champagne on one of these calls we now have 102 private member golf clubs on retainer yay so uh, so that's really good and we should have at least one more on monday uh, when they come back from holiday they're allowed to go on holiday they're going to sign up so that's good um and we've got 154 clients on retainer in total which is really good so lots of things to do um, so if you could just coordinate amongst yourselves when you're going to have your issues, that'd be really good so that we don't have to do all of them at the same time. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, redundancies. If you need to do redundancies and we're not already talking with you, um, we need to have an initial Zoom call with you and anybody from the committee or the board who is going to be involved. So everybody's on the same page because I know committees that have been in corporate life or even worse, have run their own businesses, tend to have a different approach to this than we do, who are trying to keep you safe. They tend to have somebody else footing the bill, certainly in corporate world. So if they do it wrong, somebody else just pays it. It's not, it's not a big deal, but actually we're trying to avoid that. Um, and it takes about a week of prep time before we can actually start. And it's a three week consultation period. So um, we've still got time before the end of October for, to get most of the notice period in. I'm thinking of the people who've got 12 weeks notice owed to them, but it is just making sure that you've got that all set up if you want to do it. It's not going to be ideal. It's not a problem. We can do restructuring at any point, but it's not going to be ideal if we start this on the 1st of October and then the committee says, but can't we use furlough? Well, yeah, but there's only October left now. There's not a lot of time left. If you, if you are looking at finances, as opposed to you know getting rid of troublemakers, um, the earlier we do it, the better, really. Um, and again, this is a good time to look at your Greens team and their terms and conditions, and to think about whether you would like to include them in the restructuring so you get them off of time and a half, double time, triple time, okay? So that they are just on an hourly rate, um, because they're working the same hours as F and B, and F and B never get enhanced over time, but they are more crucial to people signing up because people don't sign up because of the greenkeepers, they sign up because of the friendly reception in the clubhouse. Okay, the greenkeepers are absolutely essential. I, I, I get it because they've got to keep the course good, that's great, but that doesn't justify the actual three times their hourly weight to actually do what they're supposed to be doing anyway, whereas F and B can actually get a lot more people to sign up if they're friendly. And we do not need to have big breasted women with low cut tops to get sign ups. I'm just saying, okay, just, just to, to go against the, uh, the comment from the GCMA Norfolk meeting that I was at, where I had to, uh, well, discipline people for saying things like that. <laughs> they, were, they were ostracized. By the way, everybody else is going, no, we would never do that. Mm, okay, fine. So, so yes. I'm, I'm thinking actually, now that you're trying to get more women into golf clubs, you should probably have the young 
men with the six packs really in the skimpy tops yeah yeah exactly just like you neil yes there you go you'll be fine okay um any other questions today or is everybody gloriously happy no okay good okay well if there are any questions absolutely just send us um, emails. Emails are still the quickest way to get hold of us at the moment. We can absolutely call you back, but the calls will just get logged at the moment and then we will we do the triage system. Um, give us as much detail as you can in an email or a phone call so that we can prioritise you. Just saying I want to talk about something is not going to get you a priority call back. Talk, say I want to talk to you about gross misconduct and don't make it up, but <laughs> gross misconduct will get you a much quicker phone call. Okay. Um, otherwise, we'll see you all again next week with some more horror stories. Yay! Okay, take care. Bye.